So, Claude, can you say something? Uh, we need yes, to no problem. We're going to speak this uh, evening, morning for me. We have 11 hours difference uh, in the United States and in Russia. Uh, we're going to speak about uh, the importance of the tire, uh, why it is important to use tire data uh, that uh, Formula student team can have access to uh, from the uh, TTC. Um, and we're going to speak about how you exploit a uh, tire model to uh, uh, design, simulate, uh, test and develop uh, a Formula student car or any car actually. <clears throat> um, you tell me if that is enough or you need more information. Okay, so, okay, so uh, I think we are ready to start. Okay. Well, you can start a presentation. We have uh, everything ready. It sounds okay. uh, good. good. Okay. Um, before I start this this uh, presentation, uh, Andrea, I will send you at the end. I will send you this and the next presentation, and uh, you are obviously uh, 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 it's your decision if you want to share them with the students. But for me, uh, that's public material, so it belongs to people uh, when they want it. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, good evening, gentlemen from Russia. It's a good uh, uh, a pleasure to speak to you. Um, there is a kind of uh, uh, United Nation in Formula student. Uh, I've been very lucky to, for many, many years, to judge teams from many different universities and many different countries. Actually, uh, uh, I have been uh, judging uh, 144 times in my career. And uh, one of the fantastic things is meeting the different nation, the different culture, the different food also <laughs> when I visit the country. So, uh, unfortunately, I cannot be side by side. Otherwise, I would have done it. I would have been at Formula Student Russia. Um, but at least we can communicate. And um, let me say a few words about myself. Um, I'm uh, 66 years old. I'm from Belgium. I live in the United States. And uh, I spent 43 years in uh, race car engineering, vehicle development, vehicle testing vehicle dynamics. And uh, I own a little company called Optimum G, which has three activities. We teach in university and in companies, uh, vehicle dynamics. We do a lot of consulting in the passenger car industry and in um, race car industry. And uh, we are uh, creating and uh, managing and supporting and developing uh, simulation software. Okay, so today uh, we are going to speak about uh, tire data and tire model exploitation and in a vehicle concept simulation, design, testing, and development. So that because that's the way you should be working. Concept means do you do wings or no wings, 10 inch, 13 inch tubular, or carbon fiber? Uh, uh, one cylinder, four cylinder, uh, and then uh, you have simulation and you do should do simulation before you start to design any part of a car. Then of course, when the car is manufactured, it's about testing and development. And that's one, by the way, one of the typical issue with Formula Student is that the car finished way too late and they are not testing enough. Um, um, basically, when you do a formula student, half of the time should be dedicated in testing and development. Okay, so why is the tire important? Whether it's about safety and you uh, play with accident reconstruction, for example, or it is about performance, it is everything is happening in the tire. I have to tell you, I'm not in love with tire more than I'm with uh, aerodynamics or kinematics or damper or chassis torsion stiffness. But here's the reality. The tire is the only element of the car which is in contact with the ground. 
most of the handling issue are primarily about tire forces and moment. Whether you speak about yo moment, okay? Uh, let me put that in simple word. When you have too much yo moment, you have an oversteering car. When you don't have enough yo moment, you have an understeering car. Whether it's about agility, stability, and crash avoidance, um, whether it's about cornering, skid path, braking, and acceleration, uh, combined acceleration, so lateral and longitudinal, um, understanding your tire is uh, essential. Uh, <clears throat> in, it's the first step in that you have to go through in car design. I mean, the, the first two step is knowing the rule and understanding the rule. And the second step is uh, understanding your tire. So, um, and then if you work in the passenger car industry, you know, things like ESP, ABS, traction control. If you don't know your tire, you don't know how to make the uh, uh, program that you have into the uh, ESP and ABS. And um, the tire is the most important uh, 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 component of the vehicle is the only link that you have with the tarmac, uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, the roof, when you go upside down, the roof may have some coefficient of friction <laughs> and the roll hoop also, but that's not what's supposed to happen. And all the other section of vehicle dynamic, suspension, aerodynamic, drivetrain, they are all about maximizing the use of the tire. So, and that's not only going um, uh, about the tie, it's about the connection between the machine and the human being. Uh, you turn the steering wheel, do you have control? Is the car reacting? It's all happening in the contact patch. And then it goes the other way around. It goes from the contact patch to the hand of the driver, to the feeling that the driver have on the steering wheel, in the shoulder, uh, about lateral and longitudinal acceleration and variation of this acceleration. Uh, you need to have a tire which is listening to the driver, but you have also, you need to have a tire which is um, reacting to the driver. So number one, you need to listen. Second one, you need to react. And the third one is that you need to speak to the driver. So they are very good tire which will operate in very narrow zone do, do, who do not speak to the driver and they are not necessarily easy to, um, to work with. So when you speak about tire force and moment, the lateral uh, FY and the longitudinal force FX and uh, the free moment MX, MY and MZ, so MX, is something that a lot of people are not aware of, the overturning moment, or some people call that the camber moment, MY, which is uh, braking and acceleration torque, and MZ, which is the self-alignment torque, are a function of slip angle, slip ratio, vertical load, inclination angle, or camber, it depends in which coordinate system you are working, speed itself, uh, pressure, temperature, the rim design, and not only the rim width, but the rim design, and also things like tire wear and many, many other factors. Um, I've been able to work with a, a, a tire manufacturer like Michelin. Michelin told me in 2003 that for them, a tire is a system of 220,000 degree of freedom. There is no computer who can work in, which can work in real time uh, managing a 220,000 degree of freedom uh, system. So it's complicated, I have to tell you. Uh, the carcass and the compound are very complicated thing. Now, um, let me say a, a comment here before we dive in the subject. If you want my company, for example, if you want to have one tire, one tire model, uh, it's gonna cost you two days of testing on a tire testing machine. It's gonna cost you a minimum of $12,000. Uh, 
and it's going to cost you a minimum of six tires. That's the minimum. There are some people who spend four days, uh, 20 tires, and $20,000 minimum, sometimes even more, sorry. The student can have access for 500 US dollar life, uh, um, life contribution to all the tires that are available, uh, like Hoosier, Goodyear, Continental, and so on, thanks to uh, all the data can be accessed thanks to the TTC. TTC is Tire Testing Consortium. It is absolutely ridiculous for a formula student team not to spend that money. Actually, that's the first thing I would do, understanding your tire. Now you're gonna have raw data and you're gonna have to treat them uh, to make it a mathematical model, which then will be used for two things, setting up your car, camber variation, right temperature, right camber, things like that, uh, and designing your car also. It, so it can be designed in the concept phase and it can be used in the uh, uh, testing and development phase. Now, uh, <coughs> you need to understand your tire testing equipment. You need to understand the tire test procedure and you need to test the right thing in the right order, okay? Uh, um, Doug Milliken, uh, from, you know, the guy who wrote the book, uh, Race Car Vehicle Dynamic, he said, we are asking the kids to solve, to design a car, to solve engineering problem <laughs> without engineering data. That's why uh, he created the TTC Tire Testing Consortium so that you guys have access to the tire data. So what's the purpose of uh, testing the tie, understanding how the tie is behaving. That's number one. What we are looking for, forces and moment, uh, the free force and the free moment, dimension, position and velocity, so slip angle, slip ratio, inclination angle, uh, speed and load, uh, uh, rolling radius, loaded radius or rolling radius the effect of pressure and temperature and other things like tire wear and deflection. And some other parameters are controlled, uh, uh, some others are measured. So when you are testing tire, you have two solutions. You can go on a, a tire testing machine or you can go on a car. They all have the advantage and the best team and the best uh, are doing both. The big advantage of going to a tire testing machine is that you can test anytime when it's raining, uh, during the night, during the day. You don't have to rent a track. You don't have to carry your vehicle uh, to a test track. It's easy to instrument. It's extremely repeatable. Uh, the problem is that it's not perfect uh, because the surface that you are testing on is not necessarily the one of Arkanheim or Monza or Spa or, or any racing circuit. It's very demanded and it's very expensive. So it's not necessarily available. When you are testing outside, well, you have the real track data, that's for sure. There is one thing that you have on the left that you, don't have, do, you do not have on the, on the left, that you have on the right, the driver. So you're gonna have subjective feedback that uh, uh, is very important. Of course, you have vehicle interaction and uh, uh, the availability uh, that's quite question. Uh, cost definitely, because it's costing a fortune to do this thing. Uh, the problem is that the truck is never the same. Uh, the truck in the morning and the truck in the afternoon is not the same. And uh, you have so many parameters because when you are testing a car, at the same time, all the things like camber, temperature, pressure, vertical load, camber, um, slip angle, slip ratio, all these things are changing. Every millisecond things are changing. Where here on the left, on the tire testing machine, you can make parametric study. When I went to CalSpan, which is the tire testing machine where the TTC uh, data are accumulated, I will never forget in 1996, or oh, mamma mia, uh, 24 years ago, 
the guy who managed, who is still the same guy, by the way, the guy who managed the, uh, the tire testing machine said to me, Claude, here, you are not testing, you are modeling. So you're going to test the tire at different vertical load, everything the same, or different camber, everything the same. So you make parametric study. So you have people who are using a flat track like this one, okay? I don't know, I will not take the time to go through the details of that. Some people are using a drum uh, like this one. Uh, the one that you see on the right there is at Aachen uh, University in Germany, okay? Um, you have to understand that uh, the drum has advantage and disadvantage. Some people are using a drum uh, outside and some people are using the drum with the tire inside the drum, but it's not as good uh, as the, uh, the flat track that you have there. Uh, because the contact patch is not exactly the same. It's still useful, but it's not fully representative. Um, and some people are doing tests uh, with a trailer, which has its advantage and disadvantage. One of the biggest advantage, disadvantage that you have is that you can put a brake, but you cannot put a motor. Because if you put a motor to accelerate, then the trailer is pushing the truck. <laughs> then uh, and then you cannot make very high speed uh, also but there are some formula student team who are doing that um, some formula students cre have created their own uh, tire testing machine uh, with a little trailer or a pickup truck and then that's what optimum g is doing that's an example of a test that we did many years ago with wheel force to induce camber measurement slip angle you name it there were there was 1.7 million uh, euro of sensor on that car. Uh, that's what, that's the kind of job that Optimum G is doing. Now, when you do a test like this, you're gonna see this uh, blue line where we are testing different slip angle. And then you see that in the red line, different cam uh, vertical load, sorry. And then in the green line, different camber, okay. So that's, uh, that's the way normally we are proceeding. And on the x-axis, you have the sample number, okay? So um, you have to know what the frequency at which you are logging. Uh, so let's say if you log at uh, 100 hertz, then you have here 130 seconds uh, of, uh, of testing. I think we log at 50 hertz at Calspan. I don't remember exactly. So. Uh, this is how a complete test is looking like. Uh, you can see here in red different velocity. And when you see, for example, here that the velocity is going up and down, that means that we are making braking tests, braking and acceleration tech. You have all the sweep of slip angle when you test uh, the tire at different slip angle. And then you test the tie at different pressure. In that case, the pressure has been nearly all the time the same. And then also at different uh, vertical normal load. So um, first of all, you have to know that sometime you are warming up the tire there. So there is a part of the test where these data are not useful. It's just about testing uh, the tire. You see, by the way, that we test the tire at different vertical load in uh, the normal testing time, but also we are warming up the tire. You know that a tire at 40 degree or at 60 degree or 60 to 80 degree is not the same. So we need to make the tire operating in the uh, uh, operating zone. Um, then we are sometime repeating the test. So we repeat the test to see what's the way effect. So a tie after 10 minutes or after 20 minutes or 30 minutes is not gonna be the same. So we reproduce the test to see uh, how much um, the wear influence uh, the grip of the tire, lateral and longitudinal. Um, then in this example, we do a, a, a sign sweep or step steer uh, that allow you to uh, measure the relaxation length. Okay, relaxation length is that you turn the steering wheel or you create a slip angle, but the grip has some delay. It doesn't come uh, immediately and you need to have an idea that 
very important if you want to understand your tire and your vehicle in transition. We do also test of torsional and vertical stiffness. Let me give you an example why vertical stiffness is important. On a race car, roughly, not a formula student, but on a race car, roughly, half of the ride height variation come from the suspension movement and the other half from the tire deflection. And these cars are very sensitive, especially on the front, by 0 0.5 millimeter. 0 0.5 mm. So you change the, 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 the ride height statically or dynamically 0 0.5 millimeter, uh, and the car is completely different. And that's why it's very important that you know uh, the vertical stiffness. The torsional one is also important because it helps the driver to uh, understand uh, uh, the feedback that you are going to have in the steering wheel. Um, we are also measuring ply steer and conicity. And so not all the tires are the same. Basically, we, we turn the wheels in different uh, direction. I will let you uh, go in the detail. If you want me to uh, explain plasty and conicity, um, it's going to take another uh, seminar, just uh, another hour at least to understand that. But at least it, you, you, the names should be familiar to you. And then, of course, we do all the forces and moment. Uh, camber sensitivity, so we're going to test the tire minus two, you know, minus four, minus two, zero, plus two, plus four, plus six degree of camber. And then you are going to have this example here. For example, here, you test at three different pressure, like this. Inside the different pressure, different slip angle, but four different speeds, so one, two, three speed. And here you have one, two, uh, three different vertical load. So that's a lot of tests that you are going to do uh, uh, and you have to treat the data. And ultimately, you are going to create an example here of uh, lateral grip versus slip angle with uh, a double window of uh, input. So you have one, two, three different vertical load here and four different camber. Okay, wait a moment here. You are looking here at the model and here you are looking at the data and we did a pretty good job because you see that the model is fitting the data. But, so be very careful with this. You see that the slip angle for, goes from minus 10 to plus 10 degrees. And after that, it's an extrapolation. It's an extrapolation. If you would have done the real test, maybe the data would have gone like this and like that. You don't know. So uh, you have to be very careful about making vehicle model with tires which could operate outside the window of speed, camber, vertical load um, uh, at which you are testing. So let's say you have a lot of money and you go with tire and you go to the tire testing machine and you say, oh, I want to test my tire, okay? And the guy is going to look at you and say, at which vertical load, at which speed, at which pressure, at which camber, at which slip angle and slip ratio. You should have an idea ahead of time of what is the operating zone of vertical load, uh, pressure, speed, camber, and so on, in which the tire is operating when you go to the uh, tire testing machine, before you go to the tire testing machine. Now, after that, you are going to receive, I don't remember, when you have a TTC, you're gonna have a, I, I think it's 700 um, megabyte of information. Um, you're going to have to uh, import the data, then you're going to have to throw away some of the data that you don't need. You're going to, what we, that's what we call cropping. And then you're going to have to be some cleaning uh, to do because you have sampling rate, you have nose, you have hysteresis, you have wheel and tire ground and wheel and tire effect and tire ground effect. So let me give you an example here. Uh, ah, 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 before we go there. All right, uh, you are speaking Russian. I'm speaking French because that's the nature in English. 
Some people are speaking uh, the, 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 I'm speaking French because that's what I speak in Belgium. Some people are speaking Portuguese, some people are speaking uh, German, some people are speaking Spanish. I don't invent that. Well, guess what? You are going to have the same problem because um, some people work in, S in, some people work in millimeter, some people work in inch, some people work in Newton, and some people still work, like unfortunately in the United States, in pound. That's the way it is. Um, and same thing for the tire. You have at SIA, adapted SIA and so on, ISO, adapted ISO. So, for example, if you look at the FX versus slip ratio, ha, huh, everybody was agreeing, fantastic. Everybody speaking the same language. But lateral grip versus slip angle, in the SIA, positive slip angle is negative grip. In the adapted SIA, positive slip angle is positive grip. You know, you need to know that. Let me tell you a story. In 2018, I gave a seminar at Michelin, and two weeks later, I gave a seminar at Bosch, one in France and one in Germany. And both guys told me that 25 to 30% of the time they spend with their customer. So Michelin and Bosch, they are speaking with Opel, with Volkswagen, with BMW, with Peugeot, with Chevrolet, whatever. 25 to 30% of the time is about making sure that they speak the same language, that they are using the same unit, the same uh, system of reference, the same coordinate. You would be very surprised. There are some people where Y positive is, is to the left and some people Y positive is to the right. So uh, you convent your system, your system of reference, your origin of the coordinate. Uh, these are things that are very important. So let's go back to uh, uh, using the data. You are going to have to crop the data. So for example, here, this is the conditioning where you are warming up the tire. You are not learning anything there. So you throw that away. Uh, 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 here it is um, when the tie is cooling down. You don't need the information. So you're going to be rejecting that. This process should be automated. Some testing facility do it for you or sometime you have to do it yourself. Okay. Then you're going to have to take care of the hysteresis here because there is some variation because of the temperature. So you're going to have to uh, 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 summarize this as one line. Actually, it's the same issue as for dampers, by the way. Dampers, you have hysteresis also. And then you need to decide which model you want to use. Um, uh, there are different stories here, but if I was you, I would at least use the 5.2 model MF, which is magic formula. Um, so, you know, Mr. Paseshka is a guy who uh, created uh, the tire model. Ba basically, the, the story of Mr. Paseshka, Mr. Paseshka, Hans Paseshka, who died two or three years ago, was a pioneer. Uh, he was from Hungary and he went to study at University of Delft. And that's why, by the way, the Dutch are very good in uh, uh, tire modeling. And he studied at the University of Delft, and um, he tested a tie on a tie testing machine, and he said, oh, I have a cloth of point. There must be an equation going through that cloth of points, okay? So like, like we did, it, he collected the data here, and he find a line going through the middle of the cloth of point. He said, yeah, but if I change the vertical load, it's going to be another cloth of points, so it's going to be another line. And basically, you are coming with a mathematical equation, which is, by the way, about if you take the 6.1 or the 6.2, I think it's about 118 coefficients. So when you write the equation in Word, it's a one page. It's a, it's a big, uh, big thing. Uh, they have the advantage uh, and the inconvenient, but if I was you, I would not do anything else than the 5.2 uh, minimum. I would not play with this uh, dinosaur here. All right. Now, when you do your modeling, uh, you fit first the lateral grip. 
Then when you have done that, you do the self-alignment talk, MZ. Then you are going to do uh, F, um, uh, FX braking and combine. So when you are testing tire, you do pure braking or pure lateral, and sometimes you do combination of braking and acceleration. Uh, braking and cornering, so or acceleration and cornering. Then after that, you keep all the information and you do the FY combined. So that means lateral grip with braking or with acceleration. And then after that, you do the MZ. And then after that, you do the MX. Usually, that's the order that I advise you to uh, play with uh, to, to do that. Okay. So again, you have two solutions here. One of the solution is to do everything in MATLAB or C++ or whatever, or you buy a little software like uh, the one we sell, which is Optimum Tire, and I will show you some example. I am not pushing you to buy the software of my company. It's your decision. The question is, how much time and experience do you have to build? I mean, are you building a software or are you building a car? There are some team with a lot of experience, they should, make their own uh, tire modeling. If you don't have too much money, uh, you know, you can have Optimum Tire. Let me tell you this, okay, that's a little bit of advertising, I have to say, but Optimum Tire is $45,000, $45,000. But the student can have it for 295. Uh, so that's giving you, that's less than 1% of the time. All right, so let me show you, I'm gonna go quick here, let me show you some of the data that you can create uh, with a tire model. Here you have the lateral grip, uh, lateral force versus the slip angle. Um, uh, these are real data. That's why I didn't put the uh, value uh, the, of the uh, X and Y axis uh, with, yeah, that's in pound in vertical load, but you have, one, two, three, four, five different vertical load for three different camber. Um, this is an example of the instantaneous cornering stiffness. So what we call the cornering stiffness is this angle. It's the variation of the lateral grip. Uh, basically, it's the, 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 the angle of that curve. It's the tangent, basically. And as you can see, when the curve is flat, it means that the cornering stiffness is zero and the cornering stiffness can go negative. And here is what we call the instant cornering stiffness. As, as you can see, uh, you have a lot of angle. You have a lot of angle at the beginning and then it's becoming close to zero. So that's the instant cornering stiffness for, in that case, four different vertical load and two different camber. So, it's gonna give you an idea. When I turn the steering wheel, how much return of investment when I create a slip angle of lateral grip do, do I have? At the beginning, a lot, and at the end, you turn, turn, and not so much, and, in, and even worse, sometimes you create so much slip angle that you are losing uh, grip. Uh, this is the lateral force versus the slip angle for different vertical load and different pressure. So that's giving you an idea. And you see that, for example, that start to be interesting. Because if you look at this, uh, or this one especially, for example, you have here that uh, the blue pressure is actually giving you more grip than the high pressure at low slip angle. That means at the entry and at the exit of the corner. But when you're on the skid path, le uh, the blue pressure is not as good as the red. And the story is not the same depending the vertical load. So that is already very useful for the people who play the race engineer. Um, uh, that is the self-alignment talk uh, for different vertical loads and different camber or inclination angle. So that's gonna be very useful to calculate the steering torque uh, that you have. Guys, in formula student, a lot of people do not uh, take care about that enough. Your steering torque should not exceed five Newton meter. A lot of people don't even calculate it. 
you know, <clears throat> I've been sitting in formula student that I need to be uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to turn the steering wheel there. So I really, really, really advise you to calculate that. And one of the things that you will need for that is not the only one, but an important one is the famous MZ, the self-alignment talk. Um, you know, this self-alignment talk can go from 50 to 500 Newton meter, Newton meter. Of course, you have the steering rack, which is decreasing the torque because there's a ratio there, but you need to know that. This is the self-alignment torque versus the slip angle, but with a different pressure and different load. So it's very, it's going to tell you how much, <clears throat> you see, by the way, that the driver is going to have a very different feeling uh, depending the pressure and the, depending on the vertical load. Well, you will need that to calculate the steering uh, wheel torque. This is the longitudinal force versus the slip ratio. So positive slip ratio is when you are accelerating and negative slip ratio is when you are braking. And obviously the goal is obviously to make the car, I'm gonna go here. The, the goal is to uh, make the tire working at the peak slip angle. And you see the peak slip angle change with the vertical load in uh, the corner and in braking and acceleration, the goal will be to make the tire operating at the peak slip ratio. This is another graph that you can create. That's the famous MX, the uh, overturning moment. Uh, so MX is the overturning non-rolling moment. So uh, when the, the tire vertical load is not in the middle of, so you have your tire like this and the contact when you put camber, a maximum of uh, load is situated on one side, and that is going to create a torque. The MX, um, uh, very useful to determine what the ideal camber is. So that's the overturning moment, MX versus the slip ratio. Oh, my mistake. It's a mistake here. It's versus the slip angle. You know what? As you are recording this, I'm going to... Uh, versus slip angle. My mistake angle there. Okay, so at least it's corrected. Uh, uh, versus a slip angle for different... Um, uh, then it's this is a traction ellipse. Uh, so now we are combining longitudinal and lateral force. I'm showing you half of the traction ellipse here. And you have ISO line of different uh, vertical load and different camber, okay? And uh, that's giving you an idea of the, the grip you're going to add. Of course, uh, you go uh, at from the uh, orange there where you have only 50 ver uh, pound of vertical load. That's a formula student. Uh, 50 pound is about 200 Newton, something like that. 200, uh, 50 for, yeah, that's about two, uh, 220 Newton, 22 kilo. That's not really a lot. Uh, but um, uh, and that's why I didn't put the information here because I don't want to chew the, the job too much for you. But anyway, so you have uh, that and the vertical load and you see that from the orange to the brown or dark blue, you have a different combination of FX and FY. Uh, obviously, the more you put vertical load, the more you're going to have grip. And that's why uh, people are using downforce. Ah, ha, ha. This is what we call the instant camber stiffness. Okay, so in other words, when I put one more degree of camber, what is the depth, the benefit? Uh, so uh, the advantage of putting one more degree of camber is not the same at eight or 14 PSI and is not the same versus the vertical load. These are very, very useful information uh, when you design a car. This is an example here of four different, three different tires, lateral force versus slip angle here. Uh, it is clear that uh, if you are operating, uh, you know, you, you, you are going to use the uh, the blue tire, unless you would use the tire at very high slip angle where the green will be better. 
I will show you an example of, uh, of that later on. And this is a last example here of load sensitivity uh, for different slip angle. And you see that uh, the more you are putting load, okay, so the more load is towards the left. Uh, you see that unfortunately, the line is not uh, always the same angle. You see that a certain time you put so much load that you start to lose grip, okay? So the return on investment, when you go from 1,000 to 2,000 Newton, big change. But when you go from 9,000 to 10,000 Newton, you don't have the same return on, on investment. Well, it's good that you measure that, okay? So let's be, um, um, Let's be a little bit practical here, and I'm going to show you what you do with all this data once you go in vehicle dynamic simulation. Okay, all right, let's look at an example here. Lateral grip versus slip angle at low load on the left and a high load on the right. Okay, all right. Here, if you look on the low load, the left side, which tire do you prefer? It's obvious you like the red one. The red one has definitely more vertical load everywhere at all the range of slip angle, okay? And at uh, high load, high load, yeah, I will take the green. So the green is clearly a winner. There is no big difference between the green and the red at high slip angle once you pass the peak and yes, the blue, there's definitely you don't want to have the blue tire. Make sense? Okay, all right. So if you are running a car on the skid pad, whether you have downforce or no downforce, whether you speak about the outside and the inside tire, the inside tire will be less loaded, the outside tire will be more loaded. The green is clearly the winner. Uh, be careful because that is uh, for one given camber, so you have three uh, kilonewton here, and sorry, you have three kilonewton and six kilonewton, uh, 300 kilo, 600 kilo there. Uh, you don't know which camber, huh? you have to be careful to make two quick assumptions. But here, if it's only looking at the lateral grip, I'm taking the red tire. Good. Another way to look at it is what we call the cornering stiffness. In other words, you are looking here at the angle that you have between the different plates, and you see that uh, tire A has a low level of corning stiffness, a medium one for the B, uh, which is the green, and the red one is a high degree of corning stiffness. So here you have the lateral grip versus the slip angle, and here we have put the cornering stiffness in Newton per degree, which is this, this angle here, okay? Uh, in blue and so on. And it, it's very interesting because uh, they all go up less and less, but it's very interesting that at six kilonewton of vertical load, uh, be careful, huh? here's the lateral grip versus the slip angle, is the cornering stiffness versus the vertical load. And you see that once you are past five and a half kilonewton, boop, the cornering stiffness is less and less, okay? Um, and con cornering stiffness will have a big notion of control and stability, uh, influence on control and stability. And guess what? We are going to speak in the next presentation about the control and stability. And basically, when you are at the low uh, uh, slip angle, you are the entry of the corner. When you are in the region of zero to one and a half, between one and a half and about three degree, you are at high slip angle. And when you are uh, at, at medium slip angle, and when you are at the apex, you should be ideally at around the peak slip angle. You see, by the way, that the peak slip angle with the red tire is about, what, three and a half degree, where the slip angle with the blue tire is about seven degrees. Obviously, you don't drive and set up the car differently depending on the tire that you have. Guys, that's exactly what you need to do when you're gonna compare the Avon 10 inch and 13 inch, the Goodyear, the, uh, 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 the, Goodyear, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Continental and all the tires that you have uh, 
possibly access to uh, through the TTC data. That's the what we call the instant cornering stiffness. And you remember the cornering stiffness is that angle here, okay? And that angle changed there. And, and you see that the angle is gonna be zero here, and it's gonna be slightly negative. You see, by the way, that at high slip angle, you go through the negative. Now, guess what? The cornering stiffness of the red tire is definitely better but it's also collapsing very quickly, where the blue one is going to be less cornering stiffness, but is more easy, less variation, so less abrupt, okay? So tire C, for example, has the higher cornering stiffness at the corner entry, but you lose cornering stiffness um, at high slip angle much quicker. Tire B, has less cornering stiffness, uh, but a similar level at um, uh, change of cornering stiffness. And tire A has the lowest cornering stiffness, but is very is not as tire B uh, C the, the uh, tire A sorry the blue one will be easier for the the driver uh, the amateur driver to uh, to drive. Um, Ackerman ah the famous Ackerman there. So let's make a calculation here. Uh, when you have tire C, so you have here uh, two kilonewton and there five kilonewton. That means that this one is the inside tire on the left. This is the outside tire on the right. So let's look at tire C. And tire C is operating ideally the peak is about, so we are speaking about skid pad here, about six degree of slip angle, where here the peak for the outside tire is about 4.8 degree of slip angle. So you need a variation of 1.2 degree of slip angle between, oh, sorry, between the uh, inside and the outside. If you have tire B, well, the peak slip angle is like 8.5 where uh, here you have only five degree, so uh, 3.5 and so on. So by understanding what is the peak at which you operate, you will be able to calculate your steering geometry uh, to know what's the uh, uh, Ackermann that you need there. Another one is the load sensitivity. So in this example, we know that the operating range is when you go on the circuit, this is not a formula student. Uh, uh, formula student have much less load than that, but you are between three and five and a half kilonewton of vertical load. Um, and so you have an example of a tire uh, C with different vertical load also, okay? And um, this is interesting because the mu is, uh, uh, this is a very good tire, you have 1.9, and the coefficient of friction goes down always. Uh, but the, the slope is the same. The red and the green line are very parallel where the blue tie is collapsing very quickly. So if you are down force with the blue tire, you're not going to have a, a, a very good return of investment, okay? So uh, you see that here we use uh, the same amount of vertical load. I'm putting one kilonewton more every time and you see that the return on investment in is going down and then the mu is going down also another one uh, camber sensitivity so we test the tie at one vertical load with zero two and four degree of inclination angle okay and uh, you are going to look at the uh, uh, the camber effect on the vertical uh, on the lateral grip between minus one and no, actually it's inclination angle. So that means uh, uh, effectively it's positive to negative. And here it seems, and you have to be careful that uh, more camber the better. <laughs> yes, that's one of the problem. The problem come from the extrapolation. You never tested the tire on the tire testing machine at eight degree of slip angle uh, of camber. And then the reality is that uh, if you put so much camber, you're gonna burn 
the tire on the inside. Uh, but that at least uh, uh, you have an idea of the slope uh, that Camber have. This is an example also of uh, the lateral grip versus the camber. You, you, you went from minus 9 to 2.5. Uh, and uh, you see the reason why you have an hysteresis there is that because you make a sweep of slip angle and but at least you can make the the trend line here and you see the variation of the lateral force versus the camber okay and you see that for the red tire uh, uh, for the same tire but at three different vertical load the last thing I want to show you is this example where we test a tire and you look at the coefficient of friction here. So Fy divided by Fz or Fz. And the reason why you have all this thing is again because you do a, a slip angle test there. And it's interesting because if you look at the best temperature for tire A, it seems to be, this is a formula student tire. Because I can tell you that if it was a race tire, the ideal temperature would be 90 degree or 100 degree. But anyway, tire A seems to operate the best at around 55 degree. Uh, the green tire seems to operate at a higher temperature, uh, 60, 63. And the uh, red tire seems to operate at a um, temperature which is uh, higher also. So that's a simple graph that you can do. Let me show you an example here. These are race tire. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Um, I recognize this tire personally. There is a Bridgestone, a Firestone, a Michelin, a Yokohama, a Goodyear and a Dunlop tire here. And these are tires that you don't want to use in racing, but it's very interesting. So let me ask you a question here. Which tire do you prefer? The ideal tire that's gonna give you the most grip is the orange one. If, if you are able to operate the tire between 110 and 115. The yellow tire is a good tire, but it collapses very quickly from 70 to 90, it's going to go down. The purple tire, purple tire is a much, uh, it's not the best one, but it is the one which has the, the uh, longest, the biggest uh, window of operating between 70 and 150 degrees. Uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that you can do with a, 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 tire, with a tire model, okay? Um, let's speak about self-aligning torque here. Uh, we, we are about uh, uh, five, six slides from the end here. Uh, self aligning torque, the MZ, which is going to have a very big influence on the. Uh, 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 oh, there is a mistake here. There is a mistake. It, this is FY versus slip angle here. I'm sorry. Lateral force, by the way. But anyway, you have the self alignment torque versus the slip angle. Okay. And you see that tire A is the most demanding uh, in terms of. Well, you see 260 Newton. Well, it depends if you are positive or negative slip angle. The reason why the tire is so asymmetrical uh, is that either the tire is, is not the same on the left and on the right, it's built differently, or simply that tire has been tested with camber. But anyway, uh, you see that you have 2.9 degree here, Okay, so, uh, and you have 6.7 degree for the maximum grip. So again, that's a mistake, it's FY here. So the ideal grip is at 6.7 where the tire is MZ. So that means that the driver turned the steering wheel and feel that the steering is down, but he has not, uh, the, he feels that the grip is down. That's not true, the MZ is, is down between uh, at 2.9 degree, the grip would be about here. And he still has so much there. You have to be very careful there. Driver very often they tell you, I turn the steering wheel and then I have understeer because I can feel the front grip going down. No, 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 no. 
DMZ is going down, not DFY. You have to be careful with that. Um, and if you understand that, then you can uh, help the driver to understand. It's not because the steering torque is at the maximum that you have yet reached the maximum of the grip of the tire. Uh, let's take another example here, uh, 2.6, while the maximum grip is at 5.6. And here you have, for the red one, you have uh, 2.5, while the maximum is at 4.9. And that's gonna help you to understand the relationship, okay, between uh, FY, laterally, again, my mistake, it's FY versus the angle, and, uh, and grip them, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, this is another example, which is the FX versus the slip ratio, okay? So that's the uh, uh, longitudinal grip. Ha, wait a moment here, wait a moment. Do you agree with me, if I go back uh, up, that the best tire for lateral grip was the green one, correct? The best tire for lateral grip was the green one. Now, when it's about braking and acceleration, and you look at the FX versus slip ratio, which tire do you prefer? Ha! You know, you see that now the blue is not the best one, but now between the green and the red, okay, at low slip ratio, 5%, it's nearly the same. But once you try to operate the tie at a slip ratio of about 8%, definitely the green is better. So you understand that you cannot change the tire from one uh, 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 dynamic event to another, but the ideal tire for the skid pad is the red. The ideal tire for the acceleration is the green one. Ha ha. So you're going to have to make a compromise there. Okay. So um, this is another one, which is the camber variation. So you see that the slope of the green is much bigger than the slope of the blue and the red. So some tire are more and sometimes are less sensitive to the camber. That is going to influence two things. Number one, the amount of static camber that you put on the car. And number two, the definition of the camber variation. When you are braking, when you are rolling, when you are steering, uh, your kinematic will uh, help you to decide in which window of camber uh, is the sensitivity of that camber. Now, Let's look at the uh, traction ellipse, okay? Clearly, the blue tire is, okay, you don't want to use the blue tire. It's shit, it's, it's not very good. Red tire, ah, again, when you are looking here, wait, 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 wait. This is only for free, uh, this is for free and six kilonewton, okay? And this is only for one camber. You should be able to look at different camber here but it's clear that the red tire is a much better tire. The tires are symmetrical, by the way, you don't say. The red tire is a much uh, better tire than the green one when it's pure lateral grip, whether it's low load, three kilonewton or high load. When it's about braking and acceleration, uh, uh, definitely the green tire is gonna be better. And let's say you are braking and cornering, you see the, the red, the green tie is an advantage there. Okay, so um, this is an example of a friction ellipse there. Okay, you should be able to build that. Okay, so let's make a selection here. The, in terms of lateral grip, uh, definitely the red tie was the best. In terms of longitudinal grip, uh, definitely, the B tie is the best. In terms of combine, uh, definitely you don't want to use the, uh, 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 the blue tire. The, the green tire for me is slightly better if you go back here. To me, when you have combination of lateral and uh, the green tie is that. So maybe uh, I should put a, a, a one more plus here. Um, uh, Cornering stiffness, low, medium, and high. Load sensitivity, that's one way. 
uh, MZ feeling. And then, you know, what's the ideal camber when you are braking? What's the ideal camber that you want to use? What's the ideal uh, operating temperature? These are things that you can do with the tire data, okay? And so uh, here I have a look at the combination of the grip. So uh, 1.94 longitudinal plus 1.76 uh, longitudinal acceleration and braking, average of 1.5, and lateral grip 157, 157, okay? And you see the coefficient of friction uh, longitudinal 185, 207, 188. Definitely the green is the winner. And lateral grip 157, 160, 171. Definitely the grip is better. You see, by the way, that the delta is not always the same huh? because here between 160 and 171, you have 0.11. We're here between um, um, uh, 188 and 207, you have 12 and 7, 0.19. So uh, uh, you have more advantage with the green compared to the red in braking than you had advantage of the red compared to the green in cornering. And so we have used that in the lap time simulation software and we have put the tire on uh, uh, a lap time simulation and uh, we tried to kite Silverstone, Nürburgring, Spa, Monaco, Monza and so on. And then you are coming here with uh, a different lap time. And you see definitely that tire A uh, is uh, the loser there. And the best is definitely tire C, which is the red one, okay? But um, that's giving you an idea of how you can use the tire data. And this is the end of my presentation. And uh, I'm within the one hour roughly that uh, was given to me. Uh, for uh, 60 slides. So I do apologize. I will correct this uh, little thing here uh, then before I send the information to you, Andre. Mm -hmm. And uh, voila. So this is what it's, it's you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very, uh, very quick presentation. You know, I'm going to scare you. I'm going to show you something here, if you don't mind. Um, all right, this is uh, an Optimum G seminar that we teach in a university, for example. And this is, uh, you, you had uh, 60 hours, uh, 60 slides very quickly. This is a seminar of, I don't know if you can read it, 1,251 slides. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that in one hour, I gave you just the, the very, very quick beginning of what, uh, 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 what um, um, I'm going to say it, uh, what you can do with tire data. Uh, one thing I, I'm going to tell you is this. It's going to be the summary. You cannot design a tire without understanding the tire. And by the way, you cannot design a tire without understanding the car. Um, you have the possibility for $500 lifetime to buy the TTC uh, data. You should do it. You should learn uh, the meaningfulness, what they mean, and how to use this data to design your cars. And with that, I am open for questions. Okay, thank you, Claude. Yeah, that's great. So we're waiting. Any questions? There could be a language barrier. Maybe if necessary, you can. I would prefer the guy to try to speak uh, English. If not, Andre, maybe you can make translations uh, if the guys have questions. Yeah, of course. So, ребят, вопросы есть? Okay, Claude. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from uh, the students. The question about uh, tire grip. They have uh, the testing data prepared for mm -hmm. Adam's car simulation, and mm -hmm. they found that the Theoretical uh, simulated grip is 2.2, uh, 
but the Israel, stimulated yeah correct yeah uh yeah 2.2 and uh, but the real grip which they achieve on the car is uh, 1.5 uh yeah what is the reason of this uh, big difference between the testing data and the real data that's the question all right um first of all i need to say um that uh <sighs> You, you have to be very careful with this because um, uh, okay, number one, uh, this is not your question, <clears throat> but uh, you have to be very careful about using Adams. I never have seen in 20 plus 24 years of formula student as a judge, I never have seen a team, and I've seen many teams, doing a good job with Adams. Don't get me wrong. Adams is a very good software. We are using it, but it is a monster. It's like using a uh, 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 20 missile to kill a mosquito. You know, I mean, it's over overdoing it. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing Adams. I'm saying that for a formula student, and especially a formula student team with lack of experience, Adam is not the best way of using it. Okay, that being said, why is it a difference? Well, the number one reason is that the asphalt that you have on the tire testing machine is not the one that you have on the track. Number two, you driver is not necessary. Uh, yeah, you're speaking about Adams. Wait a moment, uh, wait a moment. You are comparing what? Um, can you repeat the question, Adams and what? And the real track data. Ah, and real data, yeah, okay. Well, number one, the tire is test on an asphalt, which is uh, on the tire testing machine, which has nothing to do with um, um, the um, um, which is nothing to do with the um, um, uh, with the one that you have on the track there temperature of the track makes a big difference and i'm going to tell you the number two one uh, are you using the tie at the peak slip angle peak lateral grip and so on and that is depending on the car design and and the driver okay what i'm trying to say is that you decide that the ideal slip angle is six degrees. Is the tire used at really at six degrees? You have compliance. That's the number one problem, is that the car is never being designed exactly like it uh, should be. Uh, and there is always compliance, which is one of the things that the drivers are uh, have different. Uh, that, uh, sorry, uh, you have compliance, which is one of the issues that most of formula students are uh, or can I say that uh, uh, mistaken? And then there is the driver. So you're going to have to use what we call a scaling factor. So hello me, I'm going to go uh, here and I'm, I'm going to show you an example here. Um, uh, okay, H hold on. I need to open a new file. Uh, that will uh, help you to understand. So that's a seminar of about 1,000 slide here. Uh, but, 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 but I'm gonna go, it's about here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go give you the, uh, the, the problem of, yeah, okay, here we go. All right, this is on a passenger tire, okay? So um, this is uh, the lateral grip, and uh, you think that you're gonna have a, co a coefficient of friction of 0 0.8, but you go on the skid pad, and you have 0 0.8 only. So uh, that means that you need to adapt the scaling factor in your Paseshka equation, and Paseshka equation allow you for that. Um, you, you have to be careful with this, you know, but let me be, uh, give you an example. I, I have gone through that. 
you are a very powerful uh, lab time simulation software and you see that you should be in that corner at 160 kilometers an hour. Uh-huh. But the drive is not able to go more than 150. Okay. So you put a scaling factor. Okay. And now you compare the data with your simulation and then you have tuned the simulation so that the lap time is exactly the same. Okay. And then you uh, uh, invite a prima donna uh, Arton Senna kind of racing driver and boom, the guy is making the car eight tenth of a second quicker. And then suddenly, instead of 150, the guy is going at 158 in the corner. Ha! Your lap time simulation and your tire model is not that bad, you know. So you're going to have to be very careful here. This is an example where we are using scaling factor. You see that, for example, here, uh, this is the tire data. And that's the reality. And you see, by the way, that uh, the, uh, the, the scaling factor um, is, pre the tie is pretty good at low slip angle, but you need to have a scaling factor of 0 0.8 at high slip angle, where the scaling factor is very, uh, the car is very good, the real at high slip angle. So you could use scaling factor de depending the slip angle that you are using. But yes, it is very possible that uh, you have a difference. And I would say it doesn't matter because I'm going to tell you, you have so many parameters on a tie and so many parameters on a race car that you will never be spot on with your simulation. You are working in relative measurement. When you go, uh, testing on a tire testing machine, you are interested in the variation of 0 0.1 bar or a variation of uh, 1,000 Newton, you, or, or let's say, or 100 Newton. You are not interested in the absolute value. You are interested in the slope, the variation of the thing. So yeah, it's normal that you come with tire data which are too good compared to uh, what you have on the track. Scaling factor. Okay, thank you. Еще вопросы есть? Okay, Claude. Yes. Yeah, uh, one question. We were talking about that uh, it's very important to use tire data in designing a race car, especially. And yeah. uh, one question... Tire data and tire model. Yes. Uh, one question, maybe I lost it during our uh, lecture, but can we somewhere take the tire data for popular student uh, uh, tires, like Cruzier or Continental? Well, I'm, I'm confused. First of all, I want to thank you and congratulate, congratulating you for your English uh, and, and for wearing a mask, by the way. Uh, that, that's a good thing. Now, the, I'm not sure I understand. A popular tire, if you buy the TTC data, you have access to all the Hoosier and Goodyear tire data from, uh, that are popular in Formula Student. Ah, okay. So we can buy it. Uh, yes. Okay, so that's uh, that was my question. Yeah, in in the T, in the TTC data you have, uh, I don't remember how many different tires you have, but definitely most of the tires that I use in Formula Student. No, if you come from with a, I don't know, a, a, a tire that we never have seen in Formula Student, maybe it's not there. But but let's say you have a Russian tire company who wants to design a tire you can always ask the Russian tire company to send tires to uh, Calspan and it will be test in the next TTC. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say is that if there is a tire which doesn't exist, TTC is open to the idea of putting a new, a new one. Okay, I see. Thank you. But, but normally, all the 10-inch and 13-inch of Goodyear and Hoosier and uh, Continental and even more, I don't remember the whole list, uh, is available uh, in the TTC data, definitely.
Вопросов больше нет? Ну что, сделаем тогда перерыв и ко второй лекции. Окей, Клод, я думаю, у нас нет больше вопросов о лекциях. Спасибо. Я думаю, мы сделаем небольшой перерыв. Десять минут? Ten minutes break will be okay for you. Okay, yeah, that's good. I need to make a quick pit stop, and then uh, we'll be there in ten minutes. Okay. Okay, perfect. Good. Thank you. See you in ten minutes. Yeah.